Welcome to the Designated Drinker Show, the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. I am your host, Louise Solis, and with me, as always, is my very, very talented friend, my friend who has performed many acts of superhuman strength, the mixtress <laughs> DC Gina. <laughs> Hi, Louise. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm like, you know, sitting in a patio in the rain at the beach thinking like, is this what Hemingway did when he got really fucked up all the time? I feel like that's yes. like his thing. Yeah, yes. Good. I think the answer to that is yes. Yeah. So I'm so, thinking if this is how I'm going to end the rest of my life with six cats. I mean, I'm fucking totally into it. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. So, so I'm going to take you on a little ditty today. All right. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to um, go across the pond and we're going to head over to jolly old England. So the date is May 24th, 1999. And John Evans wakes well rested and ready for the day. For on that day, he would attempt to set a new world record. And he did just that. He successfully balanced a 352 pound car, a mini, on top of his head for 33 seconds without using his hands. So, but that's not all. This self-proclaimed professional head balancer, John Evans, was actually, has actually broken 25 records um, in 11 Guinness World Record categories. And he's uh, done this by balancing motorcycles, boats, wash, uh, washing machines, people, and even beer kegs on his head. And then, and speaking of beer, in 2002 at the Guinness Festival, he uh, set a record for the most pints uh, pint glasses of beer ever balanced atop a human head. Yeah, apparently that's a category. Um, <laughs> he balanced 235 beer-filled glasses for um, just about 13 seconds. Um, and so I'd like to say he's uh, head of the class. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to come up with my own goddamn record-breaking shit and be like, pay I mean, me and I'll, and I'll send you a certificate. I mean, he did it at the Guinness Festival, though. I mean, you, I right. mean it's, it's crazy that these are actual categories, but apparently they are. All right. Um, yeah, cars, beers, motorcycles, you, got, you name it. So I'm why hearing did you. I, yeah, and so why am I talking about John Evans? Well, I don't know at all. <laughs> at all. Zero. It's always some Zero. weird, obscure reason. Because when it's the listeners because, hear why, I don't know why. Go, go. <laughs> Because crazy. we're talking about people who seek out balance. So which brings us to today's designated drinker. She's the founder of Rockaway Sparkling Water, Bridget Fertile. Welcome to the show, Bridget. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to be here. <laughs> Good. Hi, we're not going to ask you to balance anything on your head, I promise. <laughs> I, I think the challenge. I can't promise good results, but I mean, I'm always up for a good challenge. Could I? Could I? Gina. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> How many seconds? <laughs> so for our listeners who are watching, uh, Jan, uh, Gina just successfully balanced uh, a Rockaway soda can on her head. Um, so, Bridget, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Please tell us, how does someone from Wall Street make it to Rockaway, or make Rockaway, rather? Oh, my God. Do you want the long or the short of it? I don't know. Hey, uh, this, this episode's all about you, honey. You hey, do whatever hey, you do. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really know. I mean, I started my career, as you said, on Wall Street. I was a business school, finance geek. When I became an investor in a hedge fund, I was like, this, this is kind of boring, but I'm good at it. And uh, wound up being like, how do I make this more fun than just like doing Excel spreadsheets? So I wound up taking an interest in investing in booze. So I actually carved out a little niche for myself there at the fund, um, trading global alcoholic beverages, beer, wine, and spirits for about five years. And it led me to um, opening a rum distillery, which like, you know, how do you get to, from Wall Street to rum and now to functional sparkling water? So I opened a rum distillery in Brooklyn here in New York in uh, 2012. Had a bit of a dream and vision to bring rum distilling back to my hometown of New York City, where it was first distilled in the 1600s. Um, yeah, so that was something that I didn't expect to happen, uh, which was really awesome. Wound up building it pretty successfully over five years, formed a strategic partnership with a large spirit supplier, 
stayed with them for three years, integrating the brand that I created out of that distillery called Oni's. Um, and then earlier this year, pre the world falling apart, I kind of decided I was ready for a new challenge. And I kind of had reached my growth with Oni's and I was ready for like something different. Um, and kind of got inspired by this balance back to John Edwards of the yin and the yang of my love of partying and drinking and liquor and being in the liquor business for eight years, but also trying to like maintain some semblance of like health and wellness and like, you know, balancing that out. So I was like, hmm, let me take my sh a shot at like some sort of healthy ish beverage um, drink in the non-alcoholic space. Um, and I kind of canned my essence in that regard. So I was like stumbling upon these functional herbs. Oh, that were so a brand, a creative director in branding, just love what you just said, canned my essence. <laughs> spot on, spot on. <laughs> I was like learning about all these herbs through like herbal medicine that has been around since the beginning of time, but they were coming back into trend, you know, trendiness and something that sparked my interest was a lot of these what are known as adaptogens or adaptogenic herbs. So basically what they do is promote homeostasis within the body, again, back to balance. So like you're feeling out of balance, a little stressed out, a little anxious, take this herb and it will help you, your body regulate those like neurotransmitters without getting too, you know, sciency. Um, oh, you're feeling inflamed, take this herb for like an anti-inflammatory. And I saw some of these drinks coming into the market and I was like, hmm. These are good, but I think that there's like a wider audience for this. So I started with this like vision dream of like dual by dual uh, mission statement, duly functional in the fact that they're better for you products. Um, they're healthy for you and they're also better for the ocean. So as a member of 1% for the planet, 1% of our gross revenues are going towards um, uh, surf rider uh specifically the new york city local chapter of surf rider where they you know combat climate change and plastic pollution and then it's duly accessible from a price point it's at a a dollar 99 suggested retail price where most of the the products in this space are at a much higher price point and a taste profile so a lot of these herbs are like super earthy funky grassy which I personally like, but it's a very niche market. So I use some like awesome fruit juices and some sea salt as an homage to the ocean, obviously, to balance out that earthiness. So it's super accessible to a wider audience from a, from a flavor perspective. And I named it after my hometown. So I grew up in this place called Rockway, Rockway Beach, New York City. It's in Queens and it's right on the Atlantic Ocean. And it's such a unique place for a plethora of reasons, but mainly because it's where the like New York City streets meet the beach. And I was like, so inspired by that and the aesthetic and all right, you're killing me. Okay, Bridget, you're killing me. You send me the product. I haven't had this. This is like Christmas. This is like the kid at Christmas time. I love the branding. I love the packaging. I love you. We've been chatting. It's killing me. I want to try. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. I want to say something really quickly. So I'm from Long Island. I'm from, oh. I grew up in uh, Elmont. Cool. And my brother-in-law is from Rockaway Beach. Um, uh, Chris Coglin, right? He still has a house there. Oh, Coglin that's family. My middle, that's my middle name, Bridget Coglin Fertile, which is so, my last name. So I'll, got, I'll have to ask her if we're related. Even crazier, right? You probably are because everybody <laughs> in Rockaway Beach is if you're original <laughs> families. 100%. Anyway, my brother-in-law, it was so funny. He goes, what are you talking about? There's a, there's a seltzer company. I said, no, there's a new seltzer company from Rockaway. He goes, first there's a new bakery. Famous bakery came in. Now there's a what? I go, a seltzer company. He goes, and everybody's coming from Manhattan now. They've never been here in all these years. I'm like dying laughing, right? And I'm like, Chris, what do you, what do you fucking care? You own a house. You're going to, your house will be worth a million dollars. He's yeah. like, it already is. He's like, but I don't need all these people coming in and ruin my fishing. You know, so, him and I could share a few stories. We seem to have some things in common. So I got to tell you, when this podcast, so when, when the pandemic is over, I love, I want to come out back to Rockwell. All right, Gina, Wedding. now you're killing me. I want to taste it. Stop talking. I know, but I think it's just so funny because it's amazing. But we can talk as we're drinking. All right, go. Start. So which, which one should, should we, start we open, with? Bridget? Uh, oh, yikes. Um. Maybe let's start with the lemon lemongrass. 
It's the most, yes. Okay. And it's called Last Stop Chill because this is the one that's meant to chill you the fuck out. Love it. Anti-anxiety, anti-stress. It's ashwagandha and valerian root, but it tastes really good and it mixes really well too since we're oh, clearly. Oh, that's, see, now it was well worth waiting for, but you guys could have shut the hell up early on. <laughs> I don't think that you, so Louise is not, so Louise is married to a New Yorker, but she doesn't understand what you're, where you're from. It is like another no, I, planet in Queens. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's literally like you live at the beach in Queens. And Queens is like you live on top of each other everywhere else, except for Rockaway. And it's only like, I don't know, excuse me if I'm going to get this wrong, I think 20 blocks before you get to the next beach, right? Yes. It's like, like that it's before it's, it's little, like Rockaway and then far Rockaway. Totally. And then, then you go to the, um, Secret, Se right? Secret Highway. What is it? Secret. Yeah. And then you go to Secret. Long Beach and yeah. now you're in fucking Long Island. Yeah. A whole other planet. So crazy town. It's a, However, it's a this is delicious. You can take the A train. It's the longest line from, you know, the Northern Bronx to, to the end of Queens. Which is last kind of insane. And then, as we're drinking this last stop on the A train, cause it Rockway Park or Far Rockway is the last stop on the A train. And it's for that feeling when you've commuted home from Manhattan, which is where I went to high school and you're finally at the last stop and you're just like, <laughs> <God." laughs> I don't see that's the other thing if you're not a kid from New York you don't I don't know how old you are but if you're not a kid from New York you don't understand that either like you're pretty much going to school someplace a 45 40 minute train ride hour train ride and you know your mother's like oh it's okay you're 12 go on the fucking subway it's not really okay no. but you're getting a better education uh, okay I right I got to see the guy yeah. Pee on it's the called, train. It's called and, life lessons. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think at some point in high school, I had a beeper, obviously. But at some point, my parents gave me a cell phone, but I was only allowed to turn it on, like, if someone was murdering me on the train and I was hoping to get service and I could call someone. But you clearly like, can't. You're like, wait, don't kill me yet. I got to turn my phone on. <laughs> <laughs> this was before so pre-cell phone life, really. That's so but funny. back to the soda, this is lovely. This is really refreshing. Thank like you. Um, it's something that you could drink without, I mean, God forbid, anything without any alcohol in it. It's like that really just it it doesn't ask for anything else, but it seems like it would pair very well. Totally. It it it's again, it's got functional, healthy ingredients, very chuggable, but also very mixable. So like if you want to pause from your drink or you want to mix this with something, I find the lemon lemongrass mix is really awesome with gin because of like the herbal nature of lemongrass. Yeah. Um, you can't really go wrong. Any clear spirits. Did you ever do this with like a little Campari for like, like a Campari and like that little bit of like uh, lemony ginger flavor? Noted. I, no, I haven't, but now I'm going to try that. I feel like we should just dump a whole bunch of this in a frozen machine with Campari and have a carbonated like something. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, okay, let's move on. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> let's go to the next one. We'll come so what, back. What's we'll the talk next about one? It. What's going uh, happen next? Let's go maybe berry hibiscus. Okay. And this is like for everyday functionality, anti-inflammatory, anti-immunity, you know. It's got ashwagandha, uh, sorry, astragalus in it as the herb. What's that? Right. See? It's called Tidal Defense, obviously. So, Gina, I think you're opening the pink, which is the watermelon. Wait, where am I at? I'm opening the wrong one. It should be blue. Sorry, my bad. I apologize. No, it just all I of a sudden you'd be talking about different profiles was, and be like, I was yelling at a massive. child. <laughs> <sighs> okay, sorry. I'm good. Back at it. We're good. Ooh. It smells good. Can you tell me what the other ingredient was in there you said? Well, this is the flavors, uh, like the blueberry hibiscus. And then yeah. the, the functionality is vitamin C astragalus. And then everything's balanced with some sea salt to make the flavor pop. 
And also, what is astragalus root? I think that's the question. I think that a lot of listeners would have. Like, what is astragalus root? Um, I have that question. <laughs> yeah, it's, again, back to like ancient herbal medicine. It helps yeah. regulate a lot of these like adaptogens, as they're called. They adapt to the stressors in your body to like help you maintain some sort of equilibrium or homeostasis. So if you're inflamed, you need an immunity boost, um, focus, things like that. But depending on the variety of rockway that you're consuming, that's sort of helping your body regulate. That's delicious on itself. Like, what do you just say with that? Like, you're going to drink it with alcohol and throw a little bit of vodka in there and call it a day? Yeah. That, or nothing or nothing. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it needs anything. That's what we're calling that. That's our retox while you detox, right, Gina? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like that and a little bit of white wine or Sauvignon Blanc would be delicious. Ooh. Or socket. Like mm, yeah, like white wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc. So Maybe. honestly, like given my like history and booze, I'm just starting to get, we just launched these. So I'm just starting to get them out there to like the bar trade. So I'm loving all of the feedback on like what people would do. I have one friend doing a little bit of, trial pop-up and he's paired this um uh the title defense berry hibiscus with um alto spike tequila yum so good um i have to tell you i got a package from you like way in the beginning and it had a hat that had rockaway on it right yeah and my and my uh my my director of ops he says to me he goes i'm gonna need that and i go for what he goes because you don't know anything about rockaway and i said okay what train goes to Rockaway? And he just couldn't answer it. And I go, what? I'm like, we'll leave this here when you can understand the subway map a little bit better. And then I will let you have it. But he was like giving me the New York schooling based on like the BC boys in like 1981. I'm like, dude, they're not from there. They're from Jamaica. You got to like get it together. I was like, yeah. and he's like, you and I'm sure he was like, they're not from Jamaica. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. Then he's just looking at me and I'm like, Queens is a very fucking big place. Yeah. This isn't like Queens is like the entire population of the state of Maryland. Yeah. All right. Jammed into a very small little sausage package. Yeah. So it is. It's true. It's the most confusing place to not necessarily Rockway, but like once you get outside of Rockway, it's like 67th Drive, 67th Road, 67th Avenue, 67th Street. Instead of just having like one iteration of like a number, there's multiple names for the same numbered street. So can you imagine being the first day on the job as an Amazon delivery guy? And you're like, what the fuck am I? Like you just, you wind up in New York. You just got the new job. You're pretty psyched about it. You're like, all right, I got this. And you're like 67th, what? And then you're dropping it. You take a picture and like, dude, you, you put it into the wrong place. So that's going to come out of your pet. You're like, what? Uh, okay. I feel like you can only hire New Yorkers in, uh, in New York. I don't know. All right, go on. Let's go to the next one. I love that one. That was very good. Cool. Um, I think the next one we can go to the endless summer energy, which is watermelon guava flavor, and it has That's maca. the pink one, right? Yep, and okay. it's got maca and, and ginseng in there for like all natural energy and focus. I should get this by the vat then. <laughs> yeah, this might taste, and how carbonated, of course, how it might taste. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, because yeah. it's not. Um, what I really like about these is none of them feel like chemicals. And like no. often the, this, the flavored sparkling waters, I've tried a billion of them. Um, they, for me, the whole time, I'm like, none of this feel, none nice. of this tastes natural. Um, and then the mouth feel is always kind of weird. Ne none of yours. These are all very light and uh, on the palate, very um, the effervescent, obviously. They're sparkling yeah. water. One would expect that. But it, it's, they're really, they kind of, they're, they're really nice. They, like I said, they're just very light. Um, What's maca like root? Um, it's Peruvian ginseng. Yes. What does yeah. it do? So like um, improves energy, all natural energy and focus. That's why oh, I said I, I should that. have this Peruvian one by the back. So this could be like the endless summer energy could be a pick me up instead of coffee or tea or you can mix it in the bar if you want energy and replacement for a red bull or whatever so like a pisco and rockaway there you I go love that there you go so when you when you were planning for a drink gina how proud of are you of me that i thought i wonder i bet you she'd say pisco 
Look how much I'm learning. <laughs> That's what I love. I, yeah, you're going to do the piece go. I'm going to do something else. But we're yeah. and we're all going to do something different. I like that. No, I just, I just, I just wanted her to rub my belly because, like, I am gonna I was, rub your belly. My bar is that. downstairs, and I was like, I always bring stuff up to record, and I'm like, I, you know, she said, make sure it's a white spirit, and I was like, oh, I wonder if she'd be approve of the peace go. I just like that. It's only been three years that I've been doing the show, Bridget, that I'm actually finding, you know, finally learning something. So please don't let me take too much credit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Better hey, we're going into our fourth season. It's good. Uh, uh, all right. Absolutely. Sorry. Yeah, cool. And then I saved this for last because it's got a bit of a kick from the ginger. So this is another like everyday immunity called coastal immunity. It's pineapple ginger flavored with uh, turmeric, Tulsi, um, and also sea salt like the rest. What is, oh, all right, let's go back. Let's, what is, you said Tulsi? It's another, it's also known as holy basil. Oh, oh holy basil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's delicious too. Yeah. I really loved, Ooh. like my first go around of these, I really love them. My brother-in-law yeah. has gone through the roof about like how there is a seltzer company, which I love. Because in their world, it's only vintage seltzer and there is no other seltzer, so. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I am so appreciative that there is a new world of carbonated beverages that are not sodas and they're not, chemical seltzers yeah and they're like they're just delicious like i mean i feel like this is i think it's pretty amazing i also love the art and i know that you're not supposed to talk about packaging but god your packaging is so on point yeah it's it's amazing i you know i've known the artist who did who did the art for 15 years i actually as as louise as you can kind of intimate from Gina and I's dialogue about Rockway. It's like pretty much a small town. So the woman who did the art is married to one of my- She's clothes. married. So she's married, not she's, married. <laughs> she's married to like one of my closest friends that I went to nursery school with in Rockway. Wow. She's been around for like 15 years now. And so she gets Rockway. She understands me. She's super talented. So when it came to like my vision for the packaging, it was- you know, without a doubt, a perfect fit. And she nailed it. So. Well, what I, I what I think about the packaging, of course, um, this, you're in my word. This is what I, you know, went to school and spent all my life doing until I decided I wanted to give it all up and hang out with Gina and drink with her instead. Uh, <laughs> this <Choice. laughs> um, What I really love about it, it feels really, it's, it's, it's high energy without being aggressive. It's, youthful without being juvenile it's in it's just this really lovely like crossroads uh, for branding is really hard sometimes to nail because it gets too much of one thing or the other it just it feels like you know you don't feel like you're an adult drinking it but you do like I don't know how to that that is a little kind of silly but I mean it, it, it I think it's I think it's spot on I think it's amazing it would jump off the it doesn't look like anything else on the shelves um so yeah it I doesn't guess, I applaud you not that you need my approval but I think it's oh fantastic. of course I really appreciate the positive feedback and I so Bridget I have a question so we're in DC and Maryland and Virginia so like where are we getting this I'm like what do we have to do to get it because our listeners are here and we want to know like what's up. Yeah. Awesome. So right now we're available nationwide through our website, which is www.drinkrockaway.com. Um, and we have plans since we launched in the upside down, insane, whatever expletive words of this fucking year has been. <laughs> we are focused on online sales until early next year where we'll start more traditional retail distribution. So website for now. Also, if you follow us um, at Drink Rockaway on Instagram, that will also be super helpful because we'll be making announcements for when we're in more traditional retail going forward as we kind of grow. And the other thing, what we will do, which we do with all of our guests, make sure that um, for our listeners going, you can go to designatedrinkers.show and we'll have all of your information. And it'll also be in the episode notes for this episode. You, all you do is swipe down. You'll have uh, Bridget's uh, little bio, but in there, you'll also get, make sure we'll have the uh, links to out to where people can buy the product right, like right out of the episode notes. So they don't awesome. have to look too far. Awesome. awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, 
I'm too healthy, right? Yeah, I'm too healthy right now, Gina. Can you balance me back with some alcohol? <laughs> yeah, so I want every, so here's the thing I think is like, you really should kind of do what you want and what you're feeling for your flavoring. And like, and I honestly with seltzers, and like when you have something that's really beautifully balanced like this, you really don't want to overpower with something that's like too dark or, you know, um, you know, has a really astringent flavor to it. You know, a nice silver tequila, a really pretty floral pisco, uh, a light rum, maybe not a rum avricole so much as just a nice white rum. Um, you know, a maybe, this it sounds crazy, a light flavored grappa. Um, you know, it really lends itself. Um, one thing that just really came to my mind for this was like doing tequila, but now that I just tasted this again, I think I'm going to make a sake cocktail and I want to know what both of the ladies have and I'm going to go grab that sake, but what do you both have? To make your so, cocktails. So, Gina, you when you when we talked about this before we were um, yeah before we aired, I was gonna do is, tequila. And so, now, but here's the thing: is I actually brought up the like I said, I'm all proud of myself because I brought up the pisco. Just think that maybe that would be something you threw out there. But yeah. I also have a nice sauvignon blanc, which we don't often do. So I thought maybe I'd do that unless unless you prefer. Me, me all right, me you do the sauvignon blanc. I'll do the tequila, or I can do the sake. I'm feeling sake. Do the sake. Do the sake. Yeah, I'm gonna do sake. Let me. Just and Bridget, really what are you quick. thinking? You know, it's funny, a, fr a friend of mine who is not in the bar industry told, put sake, sake on my radar for a mixer. He mixed it with, with sake. You know, I got to go with Oni's, man. Oh, there you go. My first <laughs> baby. How can I not? <sighs> I had to go grab the, the I can't, you can't blame me for that. You know, I mean, it's your first love. So, so while we're at it, while we're waiting for Gina to grab that sake, um, what got you into uh, the rum? I mean, what, you know, the, the thing is there's so few women in, in the spirit industry, much less at like at the owner ownership level or distilling level. What got you there? What was that? What woke up? You woke up that morning and said, you know, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, I, it kind of was like that. I guess I was pretty dissatisfied. I was growing dissatisfied with where I was at uh, the hedge fund. And I was like looking for a change. I thought I would do something different in finance. Um, but I guess over six months of like trying to figure it out and soul searching and like looking at trends based on like the research that I was already doing for the hedge fund. I had this like aha moment while I was sitting at my desk at the hedge fund, like watching a video, um, you know, a TED talk essentially given by a yeah. professor at Stanford telling venture capitalists to get out there and start their own business before investing in businesses because it will give you a much better understanding. And he was totally right. And I was young and I had some money saved and I was like, I'm going to go move home with my parents in Rockaway, which I did. I thought it was only going to be for one year, but it wound up being for four years. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I saw an opportunity and I was super excited about it. I had no idea where it was going to take me, but it took me through rum and now to functional sparkling water. So who knows what, where the future lies. All right. So why don't we make a cocktail? And we were talking a little bit about, you know, what everybody likes and what the different flavors and everything with the cocktail, uh, with using Rockaway sparkling uh, waters and they're all enhanced and amazing. And we were talking about like, Louise is gonna use Pisco and like what you would use with that. Like for me, obviously, if you're gonna use the Pisco, you're gonna have to use the one that contains the maca because it's Peruvian ginseng. So that's kind of amazing, right? Okay. So for me, I'm gonna go back to the first one we tried with the um, lemongrass because I have this sake, I have a, a, a ginjo, which is basically a, a traditional sake. So no flavor or plum or anything like that. And it's not the, the white sake. And I'm gonna basically put one and a half ounces of sake with that. And Louise, were you saying that you're gonna use Pisco or Sauvignon Blanc? I have both, so you tell me. I think I was just, uh, do you, let's do a white wine. You wanna do a white wine? Okay. Let's do a white wine. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm gonna do the sake, I'm gonna put one and a half ounces in there. And so how much that, wine would I put in there then? Uh, probably a 50, I would probably do spritzer style. So I would do, you know, 30, 60%. So if you're going to put in uh, two ounces of, of uh, you know what, half and half on the spritzer. Let's do half and half and make it easier on, the, uh, on all the listeners. Half and half. 
or you know whatever whatever floats your boat but for me when you're gonna use sake sake is fortified is a spirit that has a little bit more alcohol content than wine so what we're gonna use in here is just one and a half ounces ice and then we are going to for me i'm just gonna add a little bit of lemon peel and a little bit of orange peel and uh pour it over and that's it i'm not gonna add too much to it so gina so, for the white yeah. wine what would you have me use so I'd probably, I mean, really you could use anything, you know, but I like this one last stop and chill. That might be really, really lovely. Okay. With that, I mean, if you want to use something that has a little bit more of the hibiscus flavor, that could also be really nice. It depends on what white wine. What do you have? I have a nice Sauvignon Blanc. It's very dry. All right. So then you want to probably want to use something with like the berry flavor or the um, blueberry. I, I, I would kind of like... How about the that watermelon that kind of, guava? The watermelon or, yeah, do that. Let's do that. All right, so so let's just talk about this though. When you're making a, when you're making any kind of spritz or anything, you put the citrus in the spirit and then you add the rest. Otherwise, if you put it on top, you're going to kill the carbonation in the drink, right? So I want to put a little bit more lemon in here. So I'm going to put my lemon in there and I just put one peel in and then I'm going to take a little bit of an, an orange coin and I'm going to put just a little squeeze of orange coin on top of that. That is just in the sake. And then I'm going to add ice. And forgive me because I literally dropped everything outside in the wind. I'm going to add it with my hand. So gross. Um, except it's my hand and my drink. So it's not my bar. So we're okay. So we're going to add the ice. <laughs> and then I'm going to put um, in there the first, the, uh, whew, I just really... Coastal luminosity. I am like, the wind has knocked the sails out of me or something. We're gonna put this on top. And that's it. You know what I mean? Super easy. So, so what are you doing, Bridget? So I used um, Oni's and just to my taste, really, the um, pineapple ginger, which is the coastal immunity, because I think that pineapple ginger and rum is hard to beat. Um, and I just keep it simple. like. You know, I mean, I love a fancy cocktail, but I always said, even when I was in the rum business, like I just love having awesome bartenders making me great cocktails. I can make the rum, you can make the cocktail. So I'm just like, you know, mason jar with two ounces of Oni's and throw a little, uh, throw a little of the coast Rockway Coastal Immunity on top. And I think that's the cool thing about a lot of these, the product yep. is like, it's super easy and long drinks are super easy to make. Obviously you guys just showed us that too with your variations. So let's hold them up ladies. Cheers. Cheers. I'm a mess right now. It's crazy. <laughs> I got attacked outside by the weather. It's too much. Yes. Just so our listeners know, we did have a little, you won't know it because Nick will, Nick and Janice will take care of it all. But we had a, uh, Gina was sitting out on the on the, she's beachside and mother nature said, bitch, you're going back inside. She basically got blown yeah. back into the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you ever see this episode on YouTube, good luck. My hair is amazing. <laughs> mother nature anyway. real, man. <sighs> anyway, I would, I would like to say though, one thing is I, I honestly, the tequila and the watermelon still would probably be one of the other things I would do. Tequila, I, watermelon, you know, this, little bit of. Lime, this wine, that's it. This wine spritzer is delicious. I could drink this all day. This is right? really easy. It's so easy. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I know we're coming into the colder months of the year. Um, I don't think there's any reason why you wouldn't have this drink in the middle, you know, when it's cold outside, you know, kind this of is perfect lighten for dry it up. January. This is like perfect. You don't want to drink in January. Like, this is like, this is like, thank you I don't have for making drinking. this. I don't have a problem drinking in January. Well, yeah. some people, you know, want to keep the month off. I don't know. I, I don't know, know who those people are, but like, I know they exist. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole hashtag for them. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> don't understand it. So but let's do our barkeeping, as we call it now. Gina retagged our housekeeping note. Gina, where are we going to go get this recipe? Uh, we're going to go to designateddrinker.show. Wait, Bridget, did you hear what she said? What did you say, Gina? We're going to go to designateddrinker.show for any tips, tricks, and how-tos, and also where to get um, Rockaway Seltzers and... Um, and your new home address. And my new home address and my cocktail <laughs> recipes and also my favorite colors. 
There you go. I'm just kidding. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, it's one more covered. question. All- one more question before yes. I like lose power or something. I don't even know. <laughs> Bridget, yes. in this day and age, people identify themselves with all kinds of different mythical creatures or seagulls, and they're like, I really identify identify with a seagull because they're scrappy and they can survive in any coastal situation. If you were a spirit ingredient, and it could be whether it's alcoholic or non or, you know, an herb, whatever, what would that be and why? Oh, whoa. (laughs) That is a hard question. So if I was... uh, A single ingredient, any ingredient that that describes your spirit. No, describes your spirit. An ingredient that describes your personal spirit, like your soul. Oh, it could be a food item. It could be a spirit item. It could be a garnishment. Um, oh, I mean, my gut just said a slice of pizza. <laughs> Perfect. So why? But why? I don't know. I, I identify. I'm like such a proud native New Yorker. And that's like the first food that comes to mind when I think of like that part of my soul. So like a slice from your favorite like slice shop. Um, I love that. That's a good answer. <laughs> Why can't that be a good answer? That's a great answer. You identify, an awesome answer. With, you identify with the great tomato palm, like ooey gooeyness of the crisp of New York. Oh, I, 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 I speak that language. A good slice walking down the street with a good slice. Like, yeah, there's mean, nothing else. No. And also the fact that you said slice shop and not a pizzeria, also love. <laughs> <laughs> we should we we need to go to New York, Louise, when the pandemic's over and just literally do an entire slice episode. We could do a pizzeria um, episode and a slice episode. Can and I talk come? about the difference of what the two shops are? Absolutely. You're in, Bridget? Are you in? Yes, hundred percent, please. <laughs> Perfect. Good times. All right, ladies. I hope you I hope we're all having a great day. Don't get blown away, Gina. I and, know, right? uh, shall we all find balance in the world? Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Fun, Cheers. Guys. Cheers. To Queens. To Queens. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Love it. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a podcast media company dedicated to connecting people to intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Missing Link is a proud partner of Hearing Charities of America, a nonprofit organization that supports those who are deaf or hard of hearing. To learn more about HCOA or to find out about Missing Link's other podcasts, head over to missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company. Missing Link.company.